Hi, welcome to Refine Me, I'm Mel Wright. Today's video is about the ageing process and are you going to look like a parent or grandparent when you get to their age? So the answer is, essentially. <laughs> so recently, one of my clinic patients brought me in a photo of her mum and she basically said to me, Mel, I really don't want to look like my mum when I'm older. So, on here, my patient currently is between number zero and number one. So she's got mild ageing. And then her mum is right here at number four. So her mum has um, quite extensive ageing. So she's got quite heavy jowl, in fact, very heavy jowls. Um, she's got really deep crevices here, not so much volume here. And my patient basically doesn't want to go down the same route. So her question to me was, what can we do to prevent me looking like my mum when I'm her age? And the answer is you can do a few things. So often, if, depending on your age, if you're similar to me, so I'm currently 37, if you're similar to me, you can look at where you've lost or started to lose volume. So if I fold this area and squeeze it here, you can see that I've started to lose volume. So two years ago, when I did that, I had no fold, which meant I hadn't really lost any volume. However, now I've started to lose volume, my skin is weaker because it's got nothing supporting it behind. So what I could do is I could have a little bit of dermal filler around this area, which would support it. So when I folded it like that, it didn't have as much ability to fold like this. Therefore, as time goes on and I lose more volume here, my skin won't have the opportunity to fold in like my patient's mum. So it will be supported. But that doesn't just happen in this area. The volume loss happens in all different areas. And what we try and do in my industry is we try and keep you looking as natural and youthful as possible. So if you just focus on this area, which a lot of people do because it's where you see the first signs of aging, um, you then become bottom heavy and it gives the opposite effect of youth. So if you look at this lady in number four, she's very square along the bottom. Now that's aging, we don't want to be square. If you look at the lady in number zero, she has a beautiful lift around her jawline. That's what we're aiming for. So although it's a little bit unrealistic to think of the lady in number four being pulled up and created more like lady in picture zero, you can go down the route of prevention. So for my current lady who said, Mel, what can we do? We have supported various areas around here where when we fold her skin, it just folds, as you can see there, I've got some lovely other folds. So what you can do is you can have strands of filler supported behind. I've also lost volume here. So where my cheek has started to become a little bit indented, again, I could have volume here to replace the lost volume. Now you don't want too much because you don't want a round face. You want the contours. Um, and again, I've naturally started to lose volume here. So although when I smile, I've got lovely plump cheeks, when I don't smile, I am, you can see a separation of my fat here and here, just where my little ligament is working amazingly, but it's pulling the fat apart. So what I could do is I could have some dermal filler here just to pull everything back up again. And it really gives the appearance of youth. Now by doing this, you are slowing down the aging process from a few different points. So you're slowing down the aging process because you're replacing the lost volume. So we're not giving you extensive volume to make you look like a chipmunk, which is one thing that um, I regularly hear is, I don't want to look fat, I don't want to look like a chipmunk. You won't, because we're replacing your lost volume. We're not giving you multiples of filler to give you too much. So by replacing the lost volume, it again, just gives more of a contoured effect. So it creates a beautiful round contour here. If you've never had volume here, for example, and you're starting to get jowl, you can even add a little bit of contour here, again, very naturally. And um, what also happens is you tend to lose volume here. So again, by plumping out here, it just allows your eyebrows to sit more aligned. So sometimes you get heavy here where you've lost volume. So you can lose volume around the forehead, you can lose volume around the temples. And by replacing volume, it just allows the muscles to relax a bit better. And also you don't get the peanut head look. You know, when you look at someone that's lost quite a lot of volume. So maybe they're in their 70s, 80s, maybe beyond, um, and they get hollow here. So what we're doing is we're replacing that um, and it just allows everything to sit really nicely. What also you can do is 
as I said, if you've got any weaknesses, you can have strands popped behind them just so that you're stimulating a little bit of collagen, but also you're preventing those lines from really creasing in. So sometimes when you get older, lines go from being a dynamic line. So when you have a dynamic line, when you smile, for example, you get little lines around the eyes. When you stop smiling, those lines disappear. What happens over time is those lines become static lines. So regardless of whether you're smiling and making that movement, the lines are still there and that can happen anywhere on the face. So let's say, for example, when you smile, you have no lines. What can happen over time is as you smile, you get creases down the face and then they become more apparent and they become there regardless of whether you're smiling or not. So they're what's then called static lines. Um, so again, by having threads, tiny, tiny, tiny threads and strands of dermal filler, again, you're supporting those little lines so therefore they can't fold, then they're not gonna become a static line, so they'll stay dynamic for a lot longer. And um, you're also then preventing the heavy folds around these areas. So by having filler in areas like this, you prevent that, like in number four. Again, as I said, you lose volume of the bone. So by having bits in the chin area, or the back of the jaw, you're allowing the volume to be distributed differently again, so therefore there's less chance of it hanging here because you've supported it all the way along your jawline. And also again here, by having a little bit, often really far down to the bone, it gives a really beautiful natural lift. So it doesn't look like a, a false filling in this area, which it can happen if you're not careful. So by going really deep to the bone, it just really lifts. So there's multi, multiple ways of slowing down this process and even preventing that to a certain extent. We can do everything we can to prevent you from going like this to this. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, just ping me, either DM or um, email, whatever's easiest for you. If you have liked my bit, please feel free to share and also please feel free to watch my YouTube channel. I am Mel, so find me. Thank you so much.